Excuse me. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Karibu for Jesus. My name is Suleiman and I'm excited to be your guide for today. Let me start off by saying it's an absolute pleasure to take you around this piece of magnificent history. My history. Now to start off, if you look around us, you'll see that we're in Mombasa Old Town. Just a stone's throw away from the beach that's right down there. Go on, take a look. <laughs> The fort was built by the Portuguese from 1593 to 1596 to protect the port of Mombasa and is still seen as one of the most outstanding and well-preserved examples of 16th century Portuguese fortification and at the time setting the standards. Don't worry, there's a lot more to see on the inside. But for now, why don't we go this way? And we can get this adventure underway. <laughs> Follow me. Now, this beautiful hardwood door was built during the Portuguese occupation of the fort. These metallic projections were put here to ensure that no animal would come and break in. This door knocker is not here merely for decorative purposes, but it is very functional. As you can hear, the echo goes through the hollow part of the entrance all the way into the main courtyard. Hmm? Ah, good. Now that I've confirmed that you're my guest, welcome. Karibu sana. <laughs> Let's begin our tour. Go on, take a look around. We're standing inside the actual fort itself. Now this is a model of Fort Jesus. If you look closely, you'll see that it resembles the shape of a human. The head on the seaward side, the arms on the north and southern bastions, the legs on the western side. To my right, we have the captain's house, the gun platform, the passage of the arches, the passage of the steps, the Masrui hall, and the ammunition store. To my left, we have the Portuguese cistern, the Omani well, the chapel ruins, the barracks, and the Oman house. We also have modern facilities in case you need to help yourself, just in case. <laughs> I'm only joking. Now, let's make our way to the passage of the arches, which is right this way. Follow me. This is the passage of the arches. This passage was used by Don Geronimo Chingulia, also known as Juan Yusuf, the then Sultan of Mombasa, during the siege of 1968 when they took over the fort. This passage was used to bring in ammunition and the carved out ammunition stores on the sides were used for the storage of the weapons. This passage was also used as a bunker by soldiers when the bombardment was intense. Up next, let's make our way to the captain's house. After you. This is the captain's house. This was the official residence of all the Portuguese captains who lived in the fort. As you can see, it's not too far from the gun platform and the two watchtowers on either end, probably to hear warnings of imminent attack. 
The captain's house was actually destroyed several times during the Great Siege of 1696 and again in 1875 during the al aqida revolt when the Omani Arabs requested assistance from the British to quell the mutiny. The British naval ship bombarded the fort, destroying the captain's house. And now, onto the gun platform. <laughs> We are now standing on the gun platform. This is where soldiers would look out for any ships on the coastline and immediately alert the captain whose house is right down there. There are a total of 63 cannons in and around the fort itself. British, Portuguese and Omani cannons. Go on, take a look around. I know, I know. If I had all day, I too would stay and enjoy this view. But we best be on our way to our next stop. Oh, you found me. <laughs> This route was known by a select few. It was sometimes used as a bunker when the fighting was intense, but it was mainly used as a secret escape route because it led out to sea. Up next, the Portuguese wall paintings. Take a look at the wall paintings. The wall was painted in carbon black and red oxide, and it's believed that these were some of the works of some unknown soldiers or even sailors who were stationed at the fort in the early 17th century. The paintings were removed from the wall outside and restored from 1967 to 1968. The images depict drawings of different sailboats, both Arab and Portuguese, there are churches, graves, fish, and other strange creatures. It's interesting that someone drew a broken heart. Look behind you. Maybe heartbroken due to the long periods of time soldiers would spend away from their families. It's worth noting that it took a very long six month journey from Portugal to East Africa. We've seen a lot of what the fort has to offer from the outside. Now, let's see what secrets lay within. Twendele. In Swahili, our national language, Twendele means, let us continue. Therefore, Twendele. <laughs> This is the Masrui Hall. The Masrui used this as a meeting hall to arbitrate on issues concerning the Mombasa people, who are represented by their elders, who are termed as commoners, and who always sat on the floor. The image behind you illustrates what used to go on here. Now, if you look above, there's a beam with a Quran inscription that showcases a verse that was recited during one of the Liwali's farewell prayers before he left for pilgrimage to Mecca.
This is a one-of-a-kind exhibition. Now, you may be wondering, why do I say one-of-a-kind? Because there's only one for Jesus, and you are in it. This is where we keep just a few of our treasures. But of course, you would need to physically visit the gallery to see some of the collections exhibited here. On the far end of this gallery, we have another section that showcases the Baluch. Go on, take a look around. This gallery shows the history of the migration of the Baluch people who came as mercenaries of war. After succeeding in taking out the Portuguese from Fort Jesus, many were settled in a place called Macadara where their descendants live to date. Enough of me talking. Why don't you take a look around and we can meet outside in the main courtyard where I'll take you to the chapel ruins. You are standing in the center of the chapel ruins. This church was probably the second one built in present-day Kenya after the one in Malindi. The chapel was used as a store during the Arab occupation of the fort. An interesting feature that we'll see in a bit is that this church used a cistern rather than a well, which is slightly odd considering that in those days a cistern was more commonly associated with mosques rather than churches. Speaking of the cistern, there's an interesting story behind why it was built. Follow me and I'll tell you. What you are standing in between, if you take a moment to look around, is the cistern and the well. The Portuguese built the cistern in 1603 because apparently the locals were not too friendly with the invaders and would rarely give them access to their own drinking wells. The cistern itself collected water from the roofs of the chapel, the barracks and the other buildings. The water was then led into the cistern through a network of the gutter system. It's actually 17 meters deep. I know you're enjoying your tour so far. We only have a few more stops to go, starting with this gentleman right here. Before you start feeling slightly squeamish around this fellow here, not to worry, it's just a replica. The actual skeleton lies nine feet deep, and this indicates the burial done by the Portuguese during their occupation of the fort. The administration office also stands on the Portuguese graves. The actual skeleton was excavated from the 5th to 9th of January 1990, after which work was done to cast and consolidate the fragile bones. The skeleton was later buried and this one, a replica, was placed in the same position the human skeleton was. <sighs> Off to the Oman house. This house pays homage to the sultans of Oman. Historians unanimously agree 
that the period of Sultan Said Said bin Sultan, which was from 1219 to 1273 AH, also known as the golden period in modern Omani history, due to several important considerations, including the unprecedented expansion of Omani political power in both Asia and Africa. In this house, you will glimpse Omani dresswear and culture. Take your time. Explore. Did you know that the spot on which the museum gallery stands today was one of the barracks? The others run along the northern wall on the opposite side and others along the west wall right behind you. It's estimated that the original Portuguese garrison establishment within the fort housed one captain, a hundred soldiers, four gunners and one master gunner. In addition, there was one gatekeeper, four masons, two blacksmiths, and one carpenter. And also, we had six watchmen. Talk about a full house. Now, off to our last stop, where I have a very interesting story that will surprise you the most. Let's head off to the gunpowder room. Ah, there you are. Right through this way, please. The gunpowder room is above the guard room, right next to the exit. This room was built during the Portuguese period to store gunpowder. Now, as the story goes, during the Great Siege, the Portuguese captain, Antonio Mogo de Mello, lured the Arabs into this gunpowder room after he was defeated and blew himself up with all those who followed him in it. Among those who died in this blast is the son of Sheikh Daud of Faza. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed this tour as much as I did taking you on it. Kwaheri to Taunana. Goodbye. Hope to see you soon. Feel free to check out the For Jesus VR tour in case you missed out on anything. And now, my friend, allow me to lead you to the exit. <laughs>